Well, this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hello there. Blessings of the Lord be upon you wherever you are, the sound of my voice. Um, <clears throat> let's have a word of prayer, Heavenly Father. We ascribe all this to you for all that you have done. We are very grateful and thanking you. Bless this, your precious ones, under the sound of my voice, wherever they are. Let revelation, knowledge flow freely. Let understanding increase and abound in their lives. And may they not be the same, but come to the place of fulfilling the purpose for which they have been born. In Jesus, your mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. And amen. All right. Let me... Um, um, acknowledge some of you, um, Ajua blessings, Sam, my beautiful wife, blessings upon you, uh, <clears throat> Abilash, Kuma, Stella, blessings, blessings upon all of you. Well, I'm bringing you greetings from, from Europe. It's very nice and sunny over here today and um, all is well, <clears throat> all is well in Europe, all is well. Let's get to the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, um, if you don't have your Bibles, just grab a pen and a paper, something to write down, uh, take some notes, that will be a blessing to you. All right? Amen and amen. Now, um, I hope wherever you are, I hope wherever you are, the weather is beautiful. I hope wherever you are, the weather is beautiful and um, um, <clears throat> looking forward to um, um, wherever where I am the weather is very beautiful and so it's very sunny in Europe and I hope that you are not in the cold um, <clears throat> I will be speaking with you Sylvia right after this broadcast all right I'll talk to you my dear after this broadcast well let's get to the Word of God if you have your Bibles with you if you don't have your Bibles, um, again, take a, a pen and paper. It's beautiful. Hey, man of God, God bless you. Again, I hope it's not cold where you are. It's beautiful in Europe. Very beautiful. The weather is so nice today. And I, I pray that um, the network stays good and behave not like last Friday. Their network over here is kind of poor. Don't tell them that because they will get me out of here. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the word of God. If you have your Bibles with me, with you, come with me to the book of John. John, the fourth chapter. John, the fourth chapter. Let's look at uh, John, the fourth chapter. I want to look at a very interesting um, dialogue between a Samaritan and a Jew. A Samaritan and a Jew. And the focal point is here, it's all on Jesus. It's all on Jesus, the master himself, the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach. Now, there was this, this dialogue between the Samaritan woman and Jesus, the Jew. And uh, you know that both of them, don't, don't, they don't have things in common. Are you listening? Now, the interesting point here is that um, Jesus um, encountered this lady at, encountered this lady at, um, um, at the, the well of Jacob and um, had an, a very interesting dialogue with, um, with Jesus. Let's read some scriptures, all right? I love to read. I love to read, and you must read the Word of God. You must, beloved. You got to read. If you don't read it, again, I've, 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 I've told you this. When you read the Word of God, God speaks to you. Are you listening? When you read the Word of God, God speaks to you. Um, when, when you read the Word of God, God speaks to you. But if you don't read 
if you don't read the word of God um, and only pray, then God just listen. When you just pray, God just listen. All right. But when you want God to speak to you, you read the word of God. Okay. And so let us read the word of God so God can speak to us. John chapter 4, verse 1. So when the Lord learned that the Pharisees had been told that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself was not baptizing, okay, but his disciples were, although Jesus himself was not baptizing, but the disciples were, he left Judea and returned again to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. Jesus had to go through Samaria. He had to go to back to Galil Gal blah. Galilee. He has to go to Galilee, but he has to go to Galilee through Samaria. Okay? Like I'm here now. I'm going somewhere, but I'm passing through Europe. And that's where I am right now. I'm not telling you exactly where I am in Europe, but I am in Europe. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, Jesus had to go through Samaria, verse 5. So he arrived at a Samaritan town called Sychar, or Sika. all right? And um, uh, he arrived in a Samaritan town called Sika, near the tract of land that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. And Jacob's well, Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, tired as he was from his journey, sat down by the well. Uh, this was around about um, the sixth hour. The sixth hour in the Jewish time is around, we're talking this time, it's around about 12 noon. Around about 12 o'clock there. There are about high noon. The weather, oh, it's hot. Like right now, it's hot in here in Europe. It's hot. Beautiful though. Then, the woman, verse 7, then a woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. It's hot. Give me a drink. For the disciples of Jesus had gone off into the city to buy food. Then the Samaritan woman asked him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink, for Jews have nothing to do with the Samaritans. And that is a fact. Jews don't have nothing to do with the Samaritans. So how come you a Jew coming down to ask me for a drink? It's almost like we don't flow. We don't flow together. So how are you coming to me? How are you coming to me for, for a drink? Then Jesus answered the woman and said, if you knew about God's gift, all right, eternal gift of God, and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you will have asked him instead, and he would have given you a living water. If you know who is talking to you, who is asking you to give him a drink. If you know who is talking to you, the one who gives eternal life, you will then have given him that drink without even questioning because he gives eternal life. And then she said to Jesus, Sir, you have nothing that she, she's, she's changing, like somebody says, she's changing the goalpost. She's moving away from the goalpost. The fact of the matter is, we are we don't we 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 are not together. We don't flow together. So how come are you even coming to me to ask me something? All right. And now she's moving the goalpost, talking about you have nothing to draw with, no a bucket, no a rope, because you know it's a well. So we got to just drop the bottle. I mean the bucket, and to draw, you know, just draw. And some of you who have not been born in some of these areas, you wouldn't even understand what exactly what it looks like. <laughs> uh, he just said, you don't have nothing to draw from. Not even a bucket nor a rope. 
Where then do you get that water, you, that living water? You have no, nothing to draw from this. And you are talking about giving a living water. Giving a, li a living water. You are giving a living water from drawing from what? Drawing from what? Well, we're going to see something interesting here. Drawing from what? Uh, are you greater than our father, verse 12? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and who used to drink from it himself and his sons and his cattle also? Are you greater than him? Are you greater than our father Jacob? Jesus answered her and said, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. But the water that I give him will become in him a spring of water. What? Whatever water I give that person will become a spring of water, satisfying his thirst for God. A spring of water, welling up, flowing, bubbling within him to eternal life. Let's pause here for a second. Jesus is saying something very interesting that the water that I can give you or anybody, that water sits in that person, it becomes a spring of it, it, it springs out. What comes into you from me springs out and becomes a living water. What comes into you from me does not stay there. It becomes a living water. It springs out. I'm using the Amplified version. It says, it continually flow, bubbling within him. It bubbles within you. There's something that is eternally deposited in you that bubbles out. Your life is no longer the same. What I give you, it doesn't just sit down there. It bubbles out. That is what I give you. What I put in you. Oh, glory be to God. Are you getting the revelation here? Jesus is saying that the water that we're talking about here, all right, the water that we're talking about here, it's, it's, it's the kind of water that when I give you that water, it doesn't sit. It bubbles out. It springs out. Now, interestingly, when, when, when you pour water into something, it, it goes, it, it just flows, it goes somewhere. But rather, this water Jesus is talking about here is that this water is, is going to just spring out and continually. I'm talking to you disciples. If Jesus has deposited something in you, you there's no way you can let it sit without bringing it up. Uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, I believe that's what it is. It says that, uh, um, God, what comes into your heart? Because out of your heart springs out the issues of life. Out of your heart springs out the issues of life. That is what you allow in, into your heart. But here, Jesus is telling this woman that you are taking this water with rope and a bucket. But the water that I can give you, that water that I, Jesus, can give you, that water will not just sit there. The water is going to spring out. Your life is going to be seen by people and to know that there's something different in you. Beloved, I don't know who you are and where you are watching this from. You need this water from Jesus because your life ain't going to be the same. Glory be to God. I'm telling you. Your life will never be the same. You know why? Because this is coming from Jesus, the master himself. Look at verse 15. John 4, 15, if you are just joining us. 
The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not get thirsty nor have to continually come all the way here to draw. Give me this water. I want this water. Because I keep coming all the time for, for this water. I just keep coming all the time. Every time I need water, I have to come. But you see, she didn't know that Jesus was talking about an eternal relationship. Eternal relationship. Something that cannot can never leave you. See, it brings me to the place of understanding to, to understand many times. Well, at least I can remember about four times. I wanted to just forget about this this Christian business and that kind of stuff. But I remember the first time, let me share this with you. I remember the first time I started the ministry. It's about 30 years ago. And uh, started the church. I mean, I mean in Philadelphia. And no, I mean, people were not coming to church. It was snowing for that matter. It was snowing. And nobody coming to church. And I was they're just sick of the whole thing. It's like, man, I'm, I'm tired of this thing here. You know what? Forget it. I went out after a while. I went out. As I'm locking this door out, and after today, forget it and forget it. Listen, I love to do my business. I'm a businessman. I love to do my business, make my money, and glory be to God. Support the gospel if that's what I got to do. I asked God for ideas to make money. And I went out there and just put the key. As I told God, that, forget it. Take this in here. I forget it. I put the key in to lock the door so I'm going to go home. The same key that I used to open the door when I came in, now the, now the, the key will not lock the door. And it's raining, I mean, it's snowing, it's just enough you know, flakes just coming down. It wasn't that heavy at that time. Of course, it became heavy later. And I was standing there, it's cold although, and I wanted to just get out. It's like, you know what, I'm done with church folks and that kind of stuff. I don't, listen, I don't like pleasing nobody. Forget that. So I'm locking this thing. I'm going about my business. You know, this is it and all that. I'm find some church to go and it wouldn't lock. The door would not lock with the same key that I used to come in. And now, whilst I was standing there featuring with this and trying to figure out, get myself out of the cold and all that, a young guy, a Filipino guy, Benjo, Later on became a good disciple. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Benjo usually passes by in front of the church, you know, building. And he'll be smoking his cigarette and just passing by going. I have invited him a couple of times to come to church. Oh, I'll come, I'll, you know, someday I'll come and that kind of stuff. Then I saw Benjo coming, of course, or as, as usual, sm smoking his cigarette. And so Benjo got closer to me. And then, right, he took the cigarette and put it on the floor and just, you know, mashed it with his, uh, with his foot. And so I thought, you know, Benjo is just passing us always. Uh, Benjo, how are you doing? He said, oh, but you, you can't open it. I said, no, 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 no. I'm trying to lock it because people didn't come to church today and I want to just go home. He's, you know what he says? Oh, but pastor, I'm coming to church. I said, Benjo, you coming to church? Stop playing. I've invited you. I don't know how many, for months. He says, I'm serious. I'm coming to church. Look at me. I got my Bible. I was like, you, you, you for real? He says, yeah, I'm coming to church. I said, okay, then let's go in. Now, I was standing there at least about 15 to 20 minutes trying to lock this door. And I couldn't lock it. And Benjo came. And Benjo, <laughs> he said he came He came to church. So we walked in. We walked into the... And so he sat down. He said, oh, the place is nice. You know. And So I said, okay, let's pray. And um, he started praying. And it's like, okay. It's like Bible said. I wasn't honestly... It, church service that time has left me. I mean, it wasn't like, forget it. I mean, so... I started, I prayed with him and we started talking. And then I had the door open. I saw a family of four, husband and wife, and two kids just come in. I said, you guys are late. Say, yeah, pastor, you wouldn't believe 
you know, the, the, the car wouldn't start and we wanted to catch the, uh, uh, you know, taxis are not passing. We want to catch the bus and we have to just wait. I said, okay, sit down. Listen, by the end of the day, by the end of the day, we closed service took place. We closed the service. And uh, by end of the day, I, I, will, I won't forget this. 83 people walked out of that building. 83. What am I trying to say? What I'm saying here is, as because Jesus has poured this water in me for which? For which? Because you know why? I, I could have still said, Benjo, forget it. You know what? Come, come next week. Because my whole idea was, you know what? Forget it. I'm done. I, I'm done with this. 83 people walk out of that place. Beloved, you would think that that, is, that that will have probably encouraged me and all that. And I've been through at, at different times, at least about three times that I wanted to quit this. But it's still there. I'm saying this thing because I can, without a shadow of doubt, tell you that Jesus has given me this eternal water that springs out of me. And for that reason... I cannot anymore try to even quit. It, it just don't seem to be working. And if you are that person as well, you will be frustrated until you, you start evangelizing, telling people, listen, it's not about any personality. It's all about Jesus. It's not about, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. And so if you, until you start telling people about Jesus, I am telling you, beloved, he has poured that water, that eternal water in you, and it's bringing out, it's bubbling out continually. You will be so frustrated until you start telling people about he, Jesus. We're going to be reading this, and you will see, that Jesus was broadcasted by this woman and Samaritans, Samaritans came to give their life to him. They came to believe. I mean, if you know the culture between the Samaritans and the Jews, they don't, they don't agree. But Samaritans came. When this water, this eternal water of God, is poured in you. Ain't no way you can sit down there. And until until you you share that water with somebody or some people or people, you love you. I'm telling you, you're not going to be satisfied. Mm -mm. You're not. Let's let, let's read on. If you just join in with John chapter four, reading from verse fifteen again. Now we are verse fifteen. We started from verse one. The woman said to Jesus, Sir, give me this water so that I will not get thirsty nor have to continually come all the way here to draw. At this time, Jesus said to this woman, Watch this now. Go call your husband and come. Now, what has the, what, I mean, there's something, there's something, there's something here that you've got to see. Jesus says, we're talking about water. Okay? Jesus, you are asking this woman for water. First of all, you are a Jew. She's a Samaritan. There's no agreement between you guys. You guys don't flow. So how come you are asking me water? The woman said. Jesus says, if you know who is asking you water, this water, you will give him because... I have, I, Jesus, have, a, have water that if I give to you, you will never test again. But you see, that is what the woman had for her to say, you know what? I don't want to be tested again because I am tired of always coming all the way down here to fetch water. I'm just tired. So give me something that, you know, will settle 
you know, my cravings will settle. I'm always looking. I am, oh, glory be to God. I am always looking to grab something. I'm always looking. The satisfaction that I, 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 I need, it's man who gives me that thing all the time. Watch, watch something here, beloved. There is some craving in you. You don't know where that is. Like there's something in you that has not settled. Let news flash. News flash. The living water of Jesus is in you, and until you come to realize that and begin to to scream to everybody that Jesus is Lord, you never, never going to be satisfied. I'm telling you, watch this. <laughs> Jesus then says, go, go call your husband. Well, we're talking about water. You said you want to give me something that I would not, if I drink, I won't be thirsty again. What has that got to do with my husband? What has that got to do with my husband? Well, Jesus says, go get your husband. Now the woman said, watch this. The woman said, the woman said, the woman said, I do not have a husband. I don't have a husband. Jesus then said to her, you have correctly said, I do not have a husband. For you have five, you have had five husbands and the, and the man you are living with even now is not your husband. The one you are living now is not your husband. Indicating that this woman has a need, whether it's an emotional need, the touch of a man, um, a sexual need, there is some kind of need that makes this woman move from one to the other. Talking about one, two, three, four, five. There's, and even the one that she is staying with or living with or shacking with or however you want to put it together right now, he's not a husband. Jesus says, you have, you, have, you have been truthful. You have been sincere about the fact that the one you are living with is not your husband. Beloved, there is, there is something that makes this woman sleep with men. There is something that makes this woman stay with a man for I don't know how long, whatever it may be, and then move on to another guy, and then move on to another man. There is something, there is something. Beloved, I don't know what you are feeling in you. There is something in you. There is something. There is something. You know, before I, I, I finally said yes, Lord, before I finally said yes, Lord, I had my business. I'm again, I, I'm a businessman and I love to do business. And um, I, I had a warehouse full of merchandise, I had employees. Now, I remember the church where I used to fellowship for almost 12 years. New Covenant Church of Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. There was an associate pastor from uh, Swaziland by the name of his uh, Gemeze. And one time, Gemeze called me and um, I was at Temple University at that time. I was in, in, in college. And he called me one time, one afternoon. He wanted me to come and help him do a deliverance on a lady. I said, me? Why are you calling me to come? I'm not a pastor. Yeah, he said, the first thing he says, yes, you are. You just don't know it. Brother Patrick, can you come? I said, okay. me? Well, after my class, I went there. No, 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 no. Let me, let me rephrase that. He says, tomorrow, I want you to come. And so the next day, I left my house around about four because he wanted his, he wanted me to get there, you know, by five. I left about four thirty there. About I got to the to the campus, and um, the reason he called me is that he needed watch this now. 
He has seen, he knew the hand of God upon me. He has seen the hand of God upon me. And he, but he needed, you know, he's from Africa. And uh, he, he, I guess the, the African style of deliverance or whatever. So he needed a brother or somebody who understands deliverance and have probably experienced this and all that. So he invited me and I came. That was, to be honest with you, that was my first my experience of deliverance. And so I went. And uh, he told me something that I will never forget. He says, he says, Brother Patrick, you've been running away from God. But let me tell you something. You cannot fight God and succeed. You love doing this business and making money and dressing well and that kind of stuff. But you know, you, you, you know God is calling you. All I remember was that, well, I was born into the church. I was born into the church from what I was told. I, was, I didn't give birth to myself. I was, born, I was born into the church, inside the church. Not in the hospital or, or you know, outside. I was born inside. inside. I was born out of the church. That's all I know. So anyway, that's all I know. So I told him that, well, I, I was told that, um, you know, I... Um, I will be, uh, I will be, I will be a pastor. You know, I will, I will preach for, for God. That was when I was dedicated as a baby, all those prophecies and all those things came. So well, that's what I know. But to be honest with you, I just love to make money and support the gospel. That's all I want to do. I, you know, I enjoy traveling and all that. Let me just, you know, he says, let me tell you something in Swaziland. I was the first and the youngest broadcast journalist. I sit on television and I'm in the whole of Swaziland. Everybody knows me. My father is a pastor and he has, he has set up so many churches, so many, over 50 churches. And um, I remember when they invited uh, Billy Graham, no, yeah, Billy Graham to uh, Swaziland I interviewed him and all that. And he told me that, son, you are going to preach the gospel because you've been fighting. You know, you want to do this TV thing here, but God wants you to broadcast him, not sitting here and broadcasting him. Well, down the, he didn't see himself as such. He knew, um, of course, his pastor was, his father was a pastor, setting churches all over the place in South Africa and all that. Down years, years down the line, the calling became so strong and um, he couldn't resist it. So he gave up all that he had. He was the youngest, he had cars, he has this and all, and then he's preaching. But he said, he want to tell me something. Say, Brother Patrick, until you come to the place where God has destiny your life to be you're not going to be satisfied with anything that you do but you know something that was exactly where i was i was constantly seeking i was constantly i, I want to make it i just got to make it I, I got to do it i was constantly doing this and all that so do you know something in second year of law school i left to do business and I never went back set up this um, international trade business that took me all over the world it came to a time one one time that I was liquidating stuff from I mean toys are rice and all that and beloved one time it came to a time where all of a sudden everything came to a halt Customers from all customers were not coming to buy nothing. It came to a point where I wanted to give merchandise to people, even on credit, and they would not take it. Just take it on credit. Just I'm saying I'm going somewhere with this for you to know that when that water of God is given to you, it will bubble out and until you said, you said, listen. Until you give that thing out, you are never going to be satisfied. Never. 
It may take years. But until, until you come to that, listen, he told me something. Alpha. He says, you cannot fight God and win. No. My brother, my sister, one time I said there were no, nobody was buying nothing. I was giving merchandise on credit. I mean, container loads on credit and they don't even want to get it. Nobody want to get nothing. I ended up in a state of depression, confused. I remember I cried for one week. If somebody said he cried for one week, I'm not talking about, I don't remember that I stopped crying and I started again. All I know is that for one week, I caught myself that I've been crying for one week. For one week, I'm crying. And I'm not crying. It's like there's something in me. I don't even know why I'm crying. Though they were not because, it wasn't because they were not buying. I mean, I was still paying my workers. I was still paying my workers. But it wasn't because of that. But there was something. There was something that I, I, it's like I'm crying for no reason. I'm just crying for no reason. I just cry. And from my house to where, where my, my, my office and warehouse is about a little, just a little over an hour drive. So I go through the toll gate and all that. And I remember one time I closed late. I was so tired. I said, if I drive, if I go through this toll gate, pay my toll and drive maybe five minutes, I don't think I will, I will, I will be alive. So immediately I paid the toll, I pulled over and I, I slept. I saw myself in a dream, sitting in my car, dreaming that it was a bunch of people, a bunch of people just standing there watching me and I was telling them, hey, you, get, you have to give your life to Jesus. Do you know him? Jesus, the, 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 um, the, the one from Nazareth, give your life. And I, I, I thought somebody was talking to me. I woke up. I'm telling you, I was sweating like crazy all over the place. He said it in the car. That was, that, was, that was my first dream about this preaching business. Saw myself for the first time. I said, let me just drive home. Baby, I cried. This, this crying and thing doesn't stop. I want to stop. I, want to, I mean, it's like, I just can't stop crying. You know why? Because I had to fulfill. I had to fulfill that divine test. Are you listening? I don't know who I'm talking to and what you are going through. You, you probably have done so many things, so many things, and you want to do this, and this one is not working, and that one is not working, beloved. You, you don't know what's happening. Let me tell you what is happening here. God is calling you. And until you say yes, this is what Pastor um, um, uh, Becky Gemezi told me. One time I cried and I was so tired of crying. About a week, I had to call him. I couldn't think of anybody. I called him. About 5 a.m. there, I, I called him. Immediately he picked up the phone, he heard my voice, he started laughing. 5 a.m. How do you call somebody at 5 a.m. and then they started laughing like they haven't even slept? And I said, Why are you laughing? He says, I know why you are calling me because God has spoken to me. I said, What did God say? He said, No, you call me, you tell me why you call me. I said, Listen, I, I can you come to my uh to my to my house, my apartment? Uh, I need to talk to you. I, I need somebody to talk to. I don't know what's happening to me, but he says, I know what is happening to you. Anyway, I have to take my car and the kids to school and take the car to the mechanic. I said, don't worry about the mechanic. I will let my mechanic come and pick up your car. You come. I, I will have two mechanics. I will let my mechanic pick up the car and fix it for you. Don't worry. You come. So he came. My brother, my sister, I'm sharing this thing with you because again, I don't know where you are. And this is a message God is giving me for somebody. You, 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 you don't know what is happening to you. 
You don't know what kind of feeling you, you have, you are experiencing. But I'm telling you something. That living water of God is poured in you. And until you allow it to begin to spring out, you begin to spring out to affect others, you ain't going to be satisfied. No, you're not. So Pastor uh, Gamese came and I said, Becky, I don't know what's happening. He says, I know. I said, so what do I have to do? At this time, for one week, I'm tired of crying. I'm just tired. I don't know if you have experienced that before, but I am just tired. I'm just tired. I'm tired, literally tired of crying. I'm tired. And so, I asked him, what do I need to do? He says, all you have to do is says, yes, Lord. I said, that's it? He says, yes, he said, just lift up your hands and say, yes, Lord. Beloved, I remember going on my knees to say, lay hands, and that's it. I don't remember nothing else. By the time that I felt myself, with, you know, getting up, I have slept for, and I couldn't sleep. All this one week or so, two weeks, I couldn't sleep. I found myself that I have slept for the first time in two weeks for about maybe five hours, six hours, something like that. And he was, he had sat in my living room waiting for his car from my mechanic. He has fed himself breakfast. He has fed himself lunch. And around about five o'clock, no, no, he had to go pick up the kids from school. So he woke me up. He said, you've been sleeping for a long time. And he says, my brother, when I was praying for you, I saw a big tree. And though that tree, it, the only description he can give was that cutting tree that sits in the center of Sierra Leone. Those of you from Sierra Leone, if you know what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about, that cutting tree. It's a big tree sitting in the center of Sierra Leone. And on that tree, when I started praying for you, it's like, a big snake that was uncoiling itself from that. And all I saw was that you just fell and slept. And you've been sleeping. From that very day, I got up. Until now. As many times, as probably at least about three times that I've wanted to just forget about this ministry business and that kind of stuff. I realized that there's no way God can leave me until I fulfill what he wants me to do. Beloved, you may be going through the same thing. Sometimes we have our own, I was sharing with my, my sister um, some time ago, about a month two or, or so ago. I said, I said, Sylvia, do you realize that most of the time, parents, we have our own plan for the kids what we want the kids to do and all that. But do we do we sit down and and ask the manufacturer, the one who created this kids, and even ask, what is his plan for creating the kids? Because see, when 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 you you are like somebody said, when you were a, a, a square and trying to put yourself in a round hole, you don't fit. You don't fit. You don't fit. There was something in this, this Samaritan woman that makes her you know, sleep or be with, with men. And interestingly, with men. With men. And we're going to see something here that this woman, this woman was the one that God has to use to bring men to him. Oh, glory be to God. Are you getting the revelation here? Mm. The woman answered, I do not have a husband. Jesus said to her, you have correctly said, I don't have a husband. For you have, you have had five husbands and the man you are now living with is not your husband. You, you have said this truthfully. The woman said to him, sir, I see that you are a prophet. I see that you are a prophet. 
Question. Does that mean the woman hasn't seen any prophet before? Does that mean that the woman has not been or had an, any encounter? She's knowledgeable about the cultural differences between the Jews and the Samaritans. She's, she, she's, she's somebody who has that understanding that that, that well there was from their forefathers, Jacob, who gave it to his son, Joseph. That's the, the, the well they drink from. She comes all the way, all the time to come and fetch something. There was something, something religious about that well that she is conscious about and probably thinking that, you know, when I drink this, it, it, it will help, you know, that, that, that divine, you know, turbulences in me. It will give me the satisfaction that I need. There was something in this woman. There was something. There was something that needed to be satisfied. I don't know what is in you. I don't know what is the fight that is going within you or that you don't know. You can't, you can't seem to put your finger on it. But beloved, ah, that is exactly what it is. Because if you can, if you can figure it out, it's no longer going to be God in action. So no longer going to be God in action. And so she said to Jesus, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. I see that you are a prophet. Our fathers, watch this. Our fathers, watch this now. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews say that the place where one ought to worship is in Jerusalem at the temple. Listen to Jesus. Jesus replied to the woman and said, Believe me, believe me, a time is coming when God's kingdom will come. When you will worship, when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans do not know how or what you worship. We Jews do know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Watch this now, verse 23. But a time is coming when it's already here. <laughs> when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit. All right? That means from their heart, the inner self, and in truth. For the Father seek people to be his worshipers. Beloved, that is what God is looking for you for. The time is coming. It's not going to be that specific place that you have to go there to worship. I I'm telling you, this is, what, this is what Jesus said. He says the time is coming and the time has come. Listen, beloved, I believe that time has even come. You know why? Studies is showing that there are people who are sitting outside in the confines, that, that four-wall worship center, not a church, we call it church, it's been wrong said, you, you are the church, I am the church, not the building. And the time is come where studies is showing that there are more people sitting outside that confines of that building than those who are sitting in there. And many were, many were they who used to go and sit there, but for one reason or the other, they are no longer going into those places anymore. It doesn't matter how many you see sitting down there. There are more who are outside than those in there. Jesus saying, the time is coming, and that time has come. That they that worship God, Okay, we'll worship him, true worshipers, he says. We'll worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such people to be his worshipers. 
God is spirit, the source of life, yet invisible to mankind. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to Jesus, I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called Christ, the anointed. When that one comes, he will tell us everything we need to know. Do you see that spiritual understanding this woman had in her? And this is the reason why she goes down to the well of Jacob to fetch this water so she can drink and help her spiritual thirst. She had a spiritual thirst. She had something that was, was test, she was thirsty for something and she thought that maybe she could get it from men and therefore she, she goes with this guy and the next time she goes with that guy and the next time she goes with that guy and the next time she goes with that guy and for and Jesus says you have you have been with five men and even the one that you are living with is not your husband she has a thirst there was something in her that makes her think that she can get that satisfaction from men i don't know what is going through you and the thirst you have but I can tell you without a shadow of doubt that that thirst, that craving, that something, I don't know. Pastor, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I, I know what it is. I know what it is. Is is You need to receive this eternal water that Jesus was telling the Samaritan woman. You need to receive this water that you will not test again. And until you receive that, you're going to be thirsting and thirsting and thirsting, craving and craving and craving, looking and looking and looking, and you will never be satisfied. She knew. She knew. She had, she had this understanding that I know, listen to her. The woman said to Jesus, verse 25, I know that Messiah is coming. I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called the Christ, the anointed one. And when he comes, he will tell us everything we need to know. <laughs> Jesus said to her, I who speak to you, I am he, the Messiah. Oh, glory. 27. Just then, the disciples of Jesus came. And they were surprised to find him talking with a woman. Like they haven't seen him talking with a woman again. It's just because she was a Samaritan woman. However, no one said anything. The Bible says. No one said nothing to Jesus. What, like, what are you asking this woman about? Or why are you talking to her? Nobody asked her anything. Then the woman left her water. Watch this verse 28. The woman left her water jar and went into the city and began telling the people. She's not evangelizing. The woman has become instant disciple. Ah, everybody, come, 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 come. <laughs> the time to satisfy that thirst has come. May you be in that place wherever you are the sound of my voice. I pray the speed of you finding that path to go on there and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. He, she says, come See a man who told me all the things that I have done. Can this be the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed? So the people left the city and they were coming to him. The people left the city and they were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus to have a meal, saying, Rabbi or teacher, please eat. 
Jesus spoke to the woman about water. Listen to Jesus telling the spirit, the, his disciples about food. He told the disciples, I have food to eat that you do not know nothing about. So the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him something to eat? Because we went out there to buy food so that we can eat. And he's saying that I have food that no one knows nothing about. When you haven't come to the place of getting revelations of the things of God, you do not even understand. Come and see a man. Oh, glory be to God, he said. She says, come and see a man. I ain't talking about you men that I've been with. Come and see the man. The one, I think I have finally found the one who can quench the thirst in me. I think I finally find him. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> I think I have finally found the, the man who can give me what I'm looking for. The one who can give me what I'm looking for. I don't know about you, y'all, but I'm telling you, I said, until you find Jesus, you are not going to be satisfied. You ain't going to be satisfied. I'm telling you. <laughs> this is not prophecy. This is a reality. <laughs> Jesus told the disciples, Ah, you don't even know the kind of food I have. Look at verse 34. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to completely finish his work. That is the food. The food is to do the will of the one who sent me. Beloved, until you do the one, until you do the will of the one who sent you, you ain't gonna be satisfied. That's what I keep saying. You're not gonna be satisfied. You'll be thirsty and you'll be hungry. You'll be thirsty and you'll be hungry. Still talking to you, disciples. Go and make disciples. Obey his word. Obey his word. I keep telling you. If you don't know how to go about it, just get on the social media and speak the word of God to whoever may listen. And you don't know who the spirit of God is going to position at the time when you are speaking to get to hear the word and give his life or her life to Jesus. Do it. I'm telling you, if not, you're not going to be satisfied. Oh, Jesus says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to completely finish his work. Do you not say, look at verse 35, do you not say it is still four months until the harvest comes? Look, I say to you, raise your eyes and look at the fields and see they are white for harvest. Already the reaper is receiving his wages and he is gathering fruits for eternal life so that he who plants and he who reaps may rejoice together. Glory be to God. So glory be to God. Verse 37. For in this case, the saying is true. One person sows and another person reaps. Are you listening? I sent you to reap. I sent you to reap for which you have not even worked for. Others have worked and you have been privileged to reap the results of their work. Listen, a lot of people have misinterpreted this scripture saying that, um, you know, some lazy, lazy young, I, 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 oh God, some lazy young boy made me, let me, let, I mean, I, 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 had, I got to go to school and teach him some sense in this. Thinking that, well, the, uh, uh, I, I, I have to be paid for, 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 oh. let me just not go there. Do you know how many, how many people who followed Christ? 
how their lives ended, do you know how many of them? For the sake of you coming in there to say that I'm a Christian today. Do you know how many people who have sown for you to come and reap? Do you know how many people that lions have eaten alive? Do you know how many people that they've been, they have, they have, they've boiled them in, in hot oil just by declaring that they are Christians? Do you know how many people have been put in jail just because they say they are Christians? Do you know how many people that, that, that they've, they've, they've killed? Do you know how many, how many people whose heads have been cut off because they say they are Christians? Today, you are here as a Christian. Did you sow? Did you sow for the gospel to reach you here for you to, instead of you also taking the baton for the next generation whom you do not know to come, you, and you are saying what? And Jesus is saying here, you did not, you are reaping where you have not even sown. Look at verse 39. Now many Samaritans from that city believed in him and trusted him as savior. They gave their life to him. Their salvation. Oh, glory be to God. Because of what the woman said when she testified he told me all the things that I have done. He told me all the things that I have done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they asked him to remain with them and he stayed there for two days. Now, beloved, we are talking about the fact that the Samaritans and the Jews don't, don't agree. They, they, they are not friends. You saw the initial encounter engagement between Jesus and this Samaritan woman as to why are you asking me, a Samaritan woman, to give you a drink. You know that you and I, you both, both cultures don't flow. Where are you coming from? But now the Samaritans have invited Jesus for him to stay with them even two days. Jesus, don't, don't, no, 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 no. There's something because we maybe we know this woman, we know this woman, whatever you want to call her, whether it's a prostitute or she's whatever it may be. We know this woman, we know this woman. And if this woman is saying this, then we believe because we know her, we know her, we know this woman. And if this woman is saying that I have met a man, I have met a man who has told me all that I have done. I've met a man. He's told me all that I have done. I believe he is the Messiah. That both Jews and the Samaritans and everybody have heard that he will be coming. And when he comes, he will tell us all that we ought to know. I think he is the man. And beloved, I want to declare to you that Jesus is the man. Jesus is the man. And he has come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Oh, I present Jesus to you. I don't know who is listening to me, beloved. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. I'm talking about Jesus, the one who was crucified and God raised him from the dead on the third day. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus, the man. Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. I'm talking about Jesus. You, the woman says, I have met the man. I have met the man. The man. I don't know what you are looking for. I don't know who you are looking looking at. I don't know what you want. But she finally got the answer for her cravings, for her desires, 
for her want that she thought she could get it from men and from that for that reason are you listening i don't know where you are where, where you are looking at i don't know who you are looking at but beloved look to jesus your answers are not in men or women your answers are in jesus look to jesus the author and the finisher of your faith look to jesus the one who has the answers for what you are looking for. Look to Jesus. I am telling you, don't look to no one. Look to Jesus. Bible says that the armor of flesh will fail you. The very person that you are putting your trust in, that person's life and their life, their breath, literally breath, is in the hands of God. The Bible says that the, the, the heart of the king or the president is in the hands of God. It is God who turns it whichever way it wants to be. Look to Jesus. Don't look to me. Don't look to nobody. I'm telling you, the best advice I have for you is to look to Jesus. You call on him at any time, any time, and he will, he will pick up your call. Look to Jesus. He will pick up your call any time. And he won't tell you that, let me call you back. You call me, sometimes I'll be telling you, can I call you back? Depending on whatever I'm doing. Jesus has time for you, anytime. Look at Jesus. She had time for this woman. She had time for this woman. And when the woman left her to run and tell everybody, I have seen this man, the man that I believe that he's a Messiah, when she came back, she came back with multitude following her and Jesus was there waiting for them. And they told Jesus, please come. We are Samaritans. You are a Jew. We know that there's, there's difference between us. But please come. We believe. We believe. We believe. Go and tell others. Go and tell others. That you have seen him. If you believe you have seen Jesus. If you believe you have seen Jesus. If you believe Jesus has done anything for you. Go and tell others. Beloved. It's not about the church you, you go to. I am not talking against your church. You are the church. Not the building that you go there to worship. That is a worship center. Are you listening? That is a worship center. You are the church. Or the denomination, if that's what you want me to call it. I'm not talking against it. But the whole idea, look at the food of Jesus. You want to, you want to see the food that he eats? Listen to what the disciples told him. But the disciples told, said, I have... I have um, the disciple says, please come and eat. The disciples were urging Jesus, verse 31, to have a meal, saying, Rabbi, eat, come and eat. Jesus says to them, I have food to eat that you don't know nothing about. And that food is, he didn't stop right there. He told them exactly what kind of food that he eats. And he says, my food, look at verse, verse 34. He says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to completely finish the food. You want to know the food Jesus eats is the food of doing his, of the father's will. Disciples, you, your food should be the assignment the master Jesus has given to you. And it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's not, it's not about anybody. It's not about anybody. It's about Jesus. Jesus. Who's going to judge you? Jesus. Who's going to, would you see you through? Jesus. Who's going to heal you? Jesus. Who's going to provide for you? Jesus. Who's going to satisfy your, your thirst? Jesus. Who's going to give you what you are looking for? Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. 
It's all about Jesus. It's not about nobody. It's, no, it's not about nobody. I refuse to let nobody hail me as, as I am the one with the answers. I, listen, I need answers for myself. Are you listening to me? I am leading you to where, as your shepherd, as your pastor, as where you can get your answers. I'm looking to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Who has all that you're looking for? Look to Jesus. And I'm telling you, that thirst will never be quenched. That desire, that, that, that un, undescribed desire, that you, you feel like there's something you can't put, you know, and I know some of you have been there, it will never be satisfied until you give your life to Jesus. And until not only giving your life to Jesus, until you have come to believe in him, and then like the woman did, you go and start telling people about who he is. You won't be satisfied. I'm going to end here. I'm going to end here. I'll be in this location for a little bit. Don't know how long, but I'll be here. And I know some people are watching that. Where you see broadcasting from and all that. Well, I'm somewhere else. <laughs> in Europe somewhere. So, listen. Go and tell others about Jesus. Go and tell them. Don't keep this to yourself. Because you see, your satisfaction, your, your blessed. As a matter of fact, this, you know, I'm praying for breakthrough. I'm praying for breakthrough. No, you know what? Talk to people about Jesus for your breakthrough. Talk to people. Lift him up. Bible Scripture says, he says, he says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. But if you want to draw men into you, <laughs> you want to draw all men to you. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's about Jesus. You are not the author and the finisher of my faith. Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith and your faith. Look to Jesus. If you are that person watching me, that you know what, I, I want to give my life to Jesus. How do I do it? This is how you do it. You, you believe him in your heart. All right, you believe him as you are believing him now. Now, the next thing you have to do is to confess him with your mouth, the Bible says, that God, you believe that he died for you and that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says you're going to be saved. You're going to be saved. If you are that person, let me pray with you by saying this right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this message I have received and I've heard. I believe you are the Christ, as the woman of Samaritan saw you. I believe you that you are the Christ. I need you into my life. I, I, I invite you into my life right now. Receive me as I receive you into my life. Come into my life. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. From this day, I want to walk with you. From this day, Satisfy my thirst. Satisfy my desires. From this day, I may tell others about you. Because you are the Lord Jesus. I thank you for receiving me. Amen. Beloved, if you pray that prayer sincerely, sincerely from your heart, Jesus has received you. You are born again. It's born again. It's a spiritual birth. You are born again. Heaven is rejoicing because of you. Trust me. That's what the word of God says. Heaven is rejoicing because of you. Now, you need to find yourself a worship place where they teach, they believe, and teach the Bible. Are you listening? Look for a worship place in your geographic location. I don't call it a church anymore because you are the church. 
look for a worship place where Jesus is worshipped. Jesus is lifted. Are you listening? Look for that place where they, they, they lift the name of Jesus. Jesus is the center, not any individual. Jesus. And let them know that you have given your life to him and you want to serve him. You also want to be baptized. Tell them you want to be baptized. It's a worship center. It's not a church. You are the church. Are you listening? God, he says you come for his church. He ain't kind of talking about the building. Religion has taught us wrong to think that the building is the church. No, you are the church. You and me, we are the church. We go into that building, that building, whatever structure it is it, put, all right? It's a worship center. It's a worship center. It's a specific place. Like you hear what Jesus was telling the Samaritan woman. Yes, the Jews worship on the mountains and in Jerusalem, specific place. But the time is coming and the time has even come that the true, listen to that word there, true worshipers will worship him from their heart in spirit and in truth. Get the revelation here. Are you listening? It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Just know that Jesus will never fail you. The woman went out there and tell everybody. Go out there and tell everybody. Are you listening? Go and tell everybody. The one who has kept you sane. The one who has kept you alive. Go. Tell your experience with Jesus to everybody. The woman told nothing but her experience to the people. Samaritans asking Jesus to stay with them. Why? Because they have come to believe. If you don't tell people of him, how can they believe? How can they believe? Tell others. There are those who believe what you say. They may not even believe what I'm saying, but they will believe what you say. So you go and tell them because he, Jesus, has sent you. He hasn't sent your pastor. He has sent you because you have believed in him, giving your life to him. The woman didn't go looking for a preacher to go and, and, and tell others. She went and told people of her experience. You do the same thing. That is what Jesus is saying. Remember, Jesus told the disciples, we the disciples, he says, go into all nations, into all nations and make disciples. He didn't say, go tell your pastors, let them go and make disciples. He said, you go. Your experience is not the same as with your pastor. Your pastor is a shepherd who's, you know, look over you with a spiritual oversight, if you will. Are you listening to me? But you, oh, glory be to God. You have experience. You have a personal experience with Jesus. Go and tell and share that experience with the world. Use this. See, I have, I've given you a tool. This social media, use it. Use it. it will, you, you, use it. You'll be all over. I'm sitting down here. Even though the, the, uh, the, um, the network over here is, is not that strong. So for most of you, you realize that I'm only, you, I'm only on uh, the, the Facebook alone. But usually, uh, we'll be, you know, all across the social media, the YouTube, the, the Periscope, the, uh, the Twitter, all across at the same time, all right, through the, uh, the software. But where I am sitting here, the, uh, the network is it's not strong. And so please share this broadcast, all right, to others through the YouTube, the Twitter, and what have you. All right, this is where I am. Uh, and so um, let me draw the curtain here. Same time, God willing, rest of the week, I'll come your way with whatever he gives me for you. I know your life is blessed because I'm blessed by getting something to know the food of Jesus. And he is the one who can give you the drink that you will never thirst again. Glory be to God. Can anybody tell, anybody say that? 
Can anybody else say that? He can give you water to drink that you will never thirst again. He, can anybody else say that? No. And so see the difference here. Are you listening? He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. I am blessed. And I know you are too. Now, our time is getting close in going to walk on the footprints and path of Jesus in Jerusalem. Are you listening? In Israel, in Capernaum, in, you know, being a river Jordan and, and on and on and on. Join us to do that. The information, if you go to the website, go to the website and get that information, www.patrickquinoministries.com. Go to the website. I can post it here for, you know, you know that we're not using that as our system. Again, I'm not home, so we can for some reason, we can't use it. We try, we'll keep trying. All right, they keep trying, and uh, we'll see how it comes. So uh, we can post it whilst I'm talking to you here now. But go to the website, and some of you already know it. Share it with all other people as well, friends and loved ones, and let's take this unforgettable trip of a lifetime. Let the Bible come clear, like somebody say clear. Let the Bible come clear to you. Amen. Glory be to God. And um, your life will never be the same. Okay? Well, if you want to also be a financial blessing to this ministry, we don't refuse it. Because you know why? We take it and we help others in need. All right? We help others in need. Like I said, the orphanage now, orphanage in Ghana, well, in that Volta region orphanage that we always talk about, They've started the, the carpentry work. Uh, I saw the, I saw they sent me a picture. I can post that one also on here. So uh, it's, you know, it's so beautiful that they've, they've done the, the TNJ, you know, for this, this, the roof for the kids. It's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. I will show it to you. All right. But we can't do it now because of, of all that. They are, they are working. And I believe this week or next week, they're going to also start, you know, going to complete all the carpentry work. And they're going to also start on the uh, the masonry work, all right, to, uh, you know, do all the stuff so that water, when it rains, it doesn't come to where they are and all that and then put those beds on there. So your financial contribution goes to work. Are you listening? It goes to work and be a blessing to others as well. Well, leaving you for now, I pray that the eyes of the Lord will watch between us and um, same time tomorrow, if Jesus doesn't show up tonight, if he does not show up tonight, I'm going to be with you again. Pray for me. All right? Pray. Pastor, what should we pray? We well, pray that the will of God for my life will continually be done. That's it. The will of God. The will of God. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Hey, la, wa, la. You can't do anything about it. La. <laughs> God bless you. All right. Until then, miss all of you soon. I'll see you all soon. I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And, uh, <laughs> and in all that, get in, get understanding. God bless you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you.